All right, welcome back to Inside with Brett Hawk. I'm a swim nerd. We're all swim nerds. Today on the show, fresh off our week in Texas with the legend Eddie Reese, we have another Texas Longhorn, the guy that was stuck in the uh, comments section the entire time during the inter-squad meet, <laughs> NCAA champion, Austin Zerhov. What is up? What's up, What's up fellas? What's happening? What's happening? Welcome to our shitty podcast with a couple of washed up uh, athletes. <laughs> Too soon? Too soon? Never. Uh, it's a private joke there, guys. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's right. stuff that you guys are washed. That's too bad. <laughs> Sunny. What's How happening? I'm back in Plymouth now. I'm actually coming to you from Ben Proud's house, where I'm now a resident. The furnishings oh. look excellent. Yeah. Ben yeah. Proud's house. Well, you live he doesn't in live Proud. here. No, Ben doesn't live in Plymouth, but he has a house here, and I needed a house. So <laughs> Ben looked well. after me. All nice. right. Well, let's just jump right into it then. Uh, we, have, um, we have some ISL going on. Um, I wrote the bottom four, but whatever you want. What is it, a play-in? Is it called? It's a, it's a playoff. It's a wild card match. Okay. Um. The four bottom teams, D.C., Iron, Tokyo, New York Breakers, they're all getting after it yesterday and today. They're about to start, and I think uh, they got pushed back a little bit, I think, but um, they should be starting in a couple hours. Starting what? No, no, no. It was today, and it's tomorrow. Dude, they swam, man. Oh, it's tomorrow. Hot. Okay, good. Sorry. It's from today. They're going to race again tomorrow. It's just much earlier than all the other matches up until now. It was like 1 till 3 instead of 8 till 10. PM. All right. So, did you watch it? I'm in, as I said, I'm in Plymouth, not in Naples, and I've not got the uh, the subscription. So. Oh, <laughs> I didn't watch it all. Wow. Well, wow. at least explain to us how this works. Like the the team that wins, they're going to go in the playoffs. Is that what's happening? So, the top two teams here, regular season, what points, where they've come in the last four matches is irrelevant. The top two teams out of the teams you mentioned um, that you can see at the bottom of the ticker there, the top two teams tomorrow night or tomorrow afternoon will go through to the playoffs in Eindhoven. And the the, 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 the bottom two teams, they're done. They're going home. Their season's finished. Wow. Well, yeah, I call this the Battle of the Bastards in uh, reference to um, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this is a fair battle. Um, it's on. Are you surprised by the results after day one here, Sonny? Honestly, uh, all of the teams, with the exception of New York Breakers, have shown moments of awesomeness because, you know, Tokyo have some big hitters with the likes of Daya Sato, who is just a phenomenal athlete. Um, seeing him in the flesh is unreal. And, um, you know, DC surprised us the last time we raced them. Iron looked really good on the second day in their, their match literally two days ago. So, you know, all of these teams, when they go against each other, it gets really exciting and, you know, Obviously, I like the matches that energy are in, but I really like watching the matches like this because they're close and, you know, you don't actually know who's going to win because these teams come third or fourth normally. So, and even New Yorker, they've won a few races that, and, and they're not far off Tokyo and Iron here. So, I, I think it's exciting and I still don't know, you know, this, this, this top one to four will change tomorrow in some way. Right. Sonny, you got any inside word on what happened yesterday here? I mean... Look Some, at the comments. Someone's probably got it right in the comments. Yeah. Someone hacked them, huh? I just think basically the live stream's been on and off, right? I've had weeks where it worked perfectly, like just unbelievable. Uh, I still think they're going in the right direction. Obviously, they got to figure out what's what the heck's going on, whether it's not enough server space or, or what. But, um, yeah, when you can't watch it, that's a big problem. Yeah. Um, but uh, there were some good swims uh, yesterday in uh, today. Day today. One. today. Today. Definitely like a couple hours ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, Time zones, they're tough. They are tough. Uh, Brendan Smith undefeated this year, 400 freestyle, uh, just an animal. I think he just uh, 337 won. No one was even close to him. Did anyone get any rest this meet? You know, I mean, what else is there going mm. on? Are they getting a few days off? I mean, mm. that was uh, that was much better than what he had gone. I think he's been 
sub 340 a couple times but uh, i would have thought that sonny was there any talk over there from guys on your team having having to shave or when to shave i'm sure some of these guys may have been in that position now hey talking to some of the new york guys that they sort of knew they were going to be in this match so they sort of went with the uh the ethos of we don't care what happens in match one to four, but we're going to be at the best we can be. If there's any chance of us getting to Eindhoven, because mm. it doesn't matter. They can come four, 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 fourth, And if they come second here, they go through. With our team, we, we sort of had that mindset. We wanted to win every match. So we was a little bit more uh, selective with the training. And, and we, we gave everyone a chance every match to swim, to swim good. Some of the guys shaved. Um, I know Ilya Shamanovic shaved before match three and match four. Uh, uh, the American lad we had, Charlie Swanson, he shaved for the last the last match. So we, we did have a few shave and a few just didn't touch a razor like Chad. We had to force him to shave his beard off before the last match. Yeah. Right, he doesn't right. shave anyways. No. So. Renzo up in the comments section. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Bruno, yeah. you're still on VK, buddy. Bruno, you can join us here if you want to jump on. I sent you the link, man. Don't be afraid. Come on, get your we face need, on here. We need Bruno. We need Bruno. 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 Uh, Austin, you watching the ISL? Have you watched a match? I'm keeping a flyover uh, finger on the pulse. I haven't really been watching too much uh, just because of the, the time differences you guys have also been struggling with. Uh, no, I did not watch yesterday. Uh, I've just been keeping up with the Swim Swam articles. Today. Today. Uh, yeah. today all right. Today. <laughs> I was asleep when it happened, so we're calling it yesterday. <laughs> Um, Hebley had a pretty sick two back. That was that was pretty awesome. Oh, that's a good point. Um, Love seeing the hometown team that tried in out to an early lead. Uh, Baltimore guy, b- born and raised, big Ravens and Orioles fan. So I had the trident to uh, to the list of teams that I support. Right, Pebley, Pebley with the best time, one forty eight five in that two hundred backstroke, fastest of the entire ISL season, faster than your Russian boy Reloff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but he, he he did go 149 after 10 days isolation because Vladimir Putin wanted to shake his hand and called him back to Russia. I did mm. see that picture. It's pretty uh, cool. Is it true that he just has like Olympians out to like this big compound and then he just like shakes their hand and hands them a bunch of cash? I've heard that's the case. He, we, we literally two days before match two was told Evgeny has been like summoned back and uh, yeah, uh, off oh, he went. We got yeah. him back for match three. Um and he had a BMW key keychain. He got a BMW, and he had a nice picture wearing his medals with with Vladimir Putin, and awesome. he, he was happy. <laughs> wow, that's epic. That's very cool. Oh yeah. man! Speaking of Russians, what's going on with Vlad? Hey, where's Vlad gone? Somebody. Northrop? Oh yeah. Twenty-one five today. I think twenty-one I'm sick. five. Twenty. There was there was a time two three years ago where he went twenty point two to twenty point six. Like clockwork, World yeah. Cup, World Short Course, Russian champs, European champs, relays. Yeah, never any 21s. I don't think... Oh God. Well, uh, <laughs> you, you guys have no idea how many people emailed me or texted me after watching these Eddie Reese interviews and the one with Wyatt Collins, and everyone was like, yo, I didn't know Brett was so jacked. I didn't know he was so <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It was just the television. Television adds 10 pounds, and it obviously went straight to my arms. Um, no, no way. I did a swim clinic with Brett back in July, and he got in, and it was full-on pythons, dude. I mean, that's what happens when all you do is curls. I mean, it's not <laughs> well, we I saw Renzo in the comments. He's doing some bicep curls listening to us. Maybe we should take a curl break as a group. Just make sure we get it three sets of 10 just to get some volume in. <laughs> um let's do some predictions here uh around the room uh sunny who's who's going to take the top two sp- spots here tomorrow iron and dc but i think iron will overtake dc they're good at the skins they have a mm. good second day i think iron and dc right yeah, yeah anyone different to that I, I mean i i feel the same way pretty much yeah i mean i want to take the hometown team i want to take dc but the last time i went against sunny America, <laughs> America smashed, or sorry, Britain smashed America in an eight free relay. Um, so I'm just going to defer to your expertise, man. But I hope my trident stay in first. Oh, they look, they look good. It's crazy about Tokyo because Tokyo have the best sponsors of any team. They are actually like almost self sustained with sponsors and financial and stuff like that. Mm. And they don't look super sharp. I mean, 
yeah other than dire other than dire and, and a couple others page man and a few others that they're, they're not not swimming great just off the super technical swimming topic for a sec going off what you said sonny their branding is sick like i love their logo i love the team name i love the colors i love the social that they do the frog kings are super super cool well, they've, they've got they everything they've got that frog though the what why don't they have a little crown on that frog right well they do for their like the emojis they do they'll just have like frog emoji crown mm. emoji which right, is yeah. equally cool so yeah maybe they'll add a crown at some point but i just want to give a shout out to their branding um I, th I think it's super tight it's the same in naples their kit bags are branded their bags are branded they've got a massive frog that sits in a box like a big plushy frog mm. They've got it all. They've they've got they've got the look, but yeah, they're not going to get to Eindhoven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then before uh, we move on, quick shout out to uh, rookie Ryan Hoffer getting a, a big touch yesterday in the fifty three. Also for my trident, twenty one one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. victory. Yeah, uh, that's getting down there. That's that's some good swimming down twenty one flats. He just needs some rest, and and he could win. Uh, the, the person that I think has swam the best yesterday that I want to watch today. 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 <laughs> Tonight is um, we're doing it every time. Simonova. Mm -hmm. I think she split fifty one on the on the iron relay and the hundred freestyle. She mm. almost won the four hundred, but she's really a two hundred swimmer. Um, fifty one for a two hundred swimmer is pretty daggone amazing. Yeah. So we'll see yeah. what she goes. Uh, Actually, shout out to my girl Ali Tetzlov. Uh, Swam with yeah. me at Auburn, won the 100 fly today. Fly, 56 flat, really nice. Good for her, great swim. Yeah. She's been on an awesome path as a pro ever since she stopped doing college, like just slowly making her way up, doing better every season. I mean, she started out as relay only for the current, that first year that the mm -hmm. ISL was around, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's cool seeing her flourish and then take a jumping off point from getting top eight at trials too. Great, great example right there of some of, of a professional athlete climbing the ranks and becoming more and more professional and then, you know, getting a win today. Um, it's huge. Like, yeah, I agree. Look at this. Yeah. What do we got oh, here? We've got oh, a new member. What's up, everybody? Can you turn your camera sideways so we go long ways? There we go. Oh, oh no. I'm on my cell phone. I just got <laughs> home from the... There we go. There, there. Oh, you just flew in from Brazil? Just flew in from Brazil, man. Had a... Had a tough night of cancellations and flight delays but i'm glad i make it back wow yeah you look rough too man look at look at the beard full grown yeah it looks good actually looking rough man looking like looking like a swimmer ready to get into fall training you know you're hungry for some more training again huh you had enough break i had enough break man two months of break it's uh it's enough I mean, I haven't been on a break break, but two months of like not training, not holding to a schedule, it's uh, it gets you soft. And all that people tapping your back at the same time and telling you how amazing you are and all that and congratulating you, it's time to get back in the cave, you know? Mm, yeah, I love it. I love it. <laughs> time to get back into the darkness. Yes. <laughs> well, listen, man, we've got some topics we want to go through. Stay with us for a sec here. We're going to talk some uh, some British swimming here, right? Did you see Adam Petey dance? <laughs> I even if I didn't want to see Adam Petey dance, which I I did want, um, that Twitter was all over it, so it, it crossed my it crossed my timeline eventually. I thought it was amazing <laughs> that that guy. I mean, he's not only a swimmer; he's a, he got the moves. It was unbelievable. You look good. I thought. Yeah, he looked he looked good. I thought. I mean, he's yeah. always he always looks fit, but you put like a tight shirt on him, some tight pants. And you're like, damn, a, this exactly. Damn, he's fit. You know, his, yeah. his packs were looking godly on that on that shirt. Yeah, yeah, uh, and, and then he could move. He could move. There was a lot of comments on social media about his hips. His hips were whew, back and forth. Yeah, in and out. Lie, hips don't lie. Never do. They don't. I'd Little. love to, to see them like on the first day to see how bad they are. Like I can only imagine how bad I am at dancing like first day, <laughs> you know, but if you, you obviously you have like one of the best partners no in the bad, world. It was no bad at all. And it, it comes down to athleticism. I mm. think, I mean, Adam's such an amazing athlete that anything he, he puts himself into, he's going to do great. 
I mean, if you want to play rugby or if you want to run or anything else, he wants to play, compete, he's going to do amazing because of his ability with his own body, you know, his athleticism. Yeah, yeah, he's an athlete. But I got two left feet, man. I'm not doing that. No way. <laughs> so the real, the real question, uh, Sonny, is, is who's the better dancer, Adam Peaty or Mark Foster? See, I don't know Adam that well, and I know Mark, so I've got to give it to Mark. But but Adam was good. Adam was good. Apparently, there's a thing like they put the last person, the put the person they put last on like the order is who they think is going to be good because it's good for ratings to finish on a high, and they put Adam last, and he, he was really good. And I hope I hope he wins because that means he won't be doing any more. He won't do any ISL, and that's really good for Energy Standard because we're good at breaststroke. So. <laughs> I'm back in for that. I've been. We were told he's not doing ISL already. But um, who's give us some? We don't. We don't know the competition over there. Have you seen any? You know the British people. Who who's the competition? Who's he up against? Oh God knows. I know sports and I swim. Do you guys have a show like that in Brazil? Surely there's like a Brazilian or an American version of this. Yeah, everyone's got one of these. Yeah, we had we had Tiago Pereira. Yeah. Going to some Dancing with the Stars type of thing in Brazil. Mm. But I don't know, man. I don't watch much TV. I, I don't think he. I don't think he won. They haven't asked you to do it yet. <laughs> oh no! no. <laughs> Wait, you, you are, you're, on a, you're on a cooking so... show, though, right? What? You you just did a cooking show competition. Yes, yes. Me and Michelle, we were in a cooking show, and um, it's still still not in the air yet. I think it's gonna be broadcasted. It's gonna be on TV next month. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, so but, you can't tell uh, us yeah, if you won or lost then. I'm all I'm all into cooking shows, into talk shows. We did a talk show last night, and uh, that's about it. I can't dance on TV, man. I couldn't dance to save my life. <laughs> you can't uh, bust out a foxtrot, Bruno. What? You can't bust out a foxtrot? Maybe a little Texas two-step or something like that. I don't even know what that means, sir. <laughs> sure, surely Brazilian is like flamenco and salsa dancing, right? That's Brazilian, Latin American. Oh, am I wrong? Oh, dude, you just. You just said a uh, uh, Spanish dance that's, that's is racist. That, that was, yeah, that <laughs> so racist. Portuguese man, it's Portuguese. I'm, com- I'm so sorry. No, man, flamingo, I'm- flamingo. I think it's uh, Spanish. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah. we do well, have uh, samba yeah. though. We do have samba, S- but I samba. don't have the ability. That that's what in my head I was thinking samba. That's right. definitely the one. Okay, man, you, you get the, you get a pass this one time. Oh, that's right. Someone said blooms on a on a yeah. show. Did anyone see yeah. bloom dance? She, she, yeah, she, she, she looked good as well. She's not on that show. She's on the Danish version, the right? Danish version. Yeah. yeah. So we gotta, I, I gotta, we gotta pull that up. I haven't seen her. Um, all right, let's keep it moving here. Enough dancing. <laughs> uh, let's talk about sprinting freestyle. Uh, China just had their nationals. They broke the fifty freestyle. Uh, something a couple of guys in here know a little bit about. Uh, in both the men's and the women's first first woman under 24 seconds. Oh, a woman went under 24. What did the, what did the guy go? 21.68. 21.6. Bruno, hey, what about that? That's legit. Yeah, kind of a wrong timing too. <laughs> he missed it by a month he or should so. Have, he should have so much 21.6 a couple months ago. But that's <laughs> right. was, it, was, was that kid at the Olympics? Yeah. 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 But yeah. good, I think good. He was, I mean, we're still. I think we're all still kind of recovering from from the impact that uh, that the whole quarantine, COVID, and uh, shutdown, lockdowns had in training. You know, and that's actually we're gonna we're gonna see who's re- who's swimming really fast. I think starting from next world, where everybody's gonna be able to have some consistency in training instead of just swimming whatever pool's open. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I th- I think we've seen the Chinese. Um, be incredible at the 200, the 400, the distance events in freestyle, but we haven't really seen a Chinese superstar come in and, and win the 50 and 100 freestyle. There was, nice that to... guy, there was that guy back in 15, right? He won, he won the 100. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, all right. The, the dude who, uh, who was known for his ass. Ning, Ning Zhao. Zetao. Zetao. That's what it is. Yeah. Zetao, yeah, I think it was Zetao Ning, something like that. Yeah, whatever happened to him? He was legit. He retired. I saw his like he had a real soft retirement. It was barely reported, but I, I, I think he retired in the last couple of years. Right. Yeah. It's it's strange with the Chinese, man. They come and go, and like it's just you just never know when they're coming, and you never know when they're going. It's just like, oh, there's one great swim gone. Um, 
I don't well, that's know. that's a, they're both 25. Liu Ao Zhang is 25. I mean, right. she, she had been 24 0 before. So to mm. see her still in the sport, that's a good thing. Still going best times, that's a great thing, especially for China. Um, Renzo. Renzo, Renzo said he's half Chinese. That means he's half as fast. Nate, who was it that <laughs> went 21 6? What, what was his name? Yu Hexen. He was 22 1 in Tokyo. 22 1. Didn't make the semis. I think he went 21 8, like to get to Tokyo. 20, was, joint 19th, he was. Joint 19th of a crazy Bruno, fella. Is there a big difference between 21 6 and 22 flat? Yes, I think so. Mm -mm. There's a. There's a difference in uh, for me. There's a di there's a difference into how high I'm feeling the water. You know how light my stroke feels. Mm. If I try to f muscle through, if I try to force my stroke, that's a twenty two zero. If I start dipping right under twenty one six, twenty one five, that's when I feel really on top of the water. You know, really light. Right. But that's mainly in, in terms of feeling. That's mainly. It's almost like an unshaved and a, and a shaved swim, you know? Right, 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 right. Okay. Well, we saw a couple of these sprinters then, I mean, have some really horrible swims, right? Like three or four tenths is a light year behind. The same thing happened to, to Ari Pekka, Luke and the, the Finnish guy, right? I think he was 21.4 or 21.5 or right around there national record and boom he didn't even break 22 didn't he, i don't even know if he made semis uh yeah but there's how are they there's off thing, so much there's a thing a lot of people don't know is that first there's a mental aspect that really plays in the olympics you know it took me it took me a couple of olympic games to understand how to manage it and finally on my third olympics i knew exactly how to deal with it and and then there's the fact that the olympics is everything as far as a perfect scenario as it gets i mean the rooms are not that comfortable the food you just eat whatever the food you just eat whatever they serve you at dining hall and then there's the bus rides and i mean you walk a lot in the village so a lot of people don't know how to deal with it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah so maybe yeah. when you're in tri when you're at trials, you're just at the best hotel with the best food, with the best like everything. And when you go to the Olympics, they just drop you right there in the village and they just say, Hey, figure it out. You know? Right. Yeah, yeah. For sure, for sure. Actually it was it was Ben Proud and I talked to him a day before the race and um uh, and he was like and I told him, Well, I haven't seen him in the in the whole week. So I was like, hey man, I thought you haven't you you were not gonna show up, you know. I was starting to get to 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 worry about you. Where have you been? And I was like, Oh, I was in a, another place because I didn't want it to walk so much in the village. So that's something that really comes into play, and some people really try to 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 come with strategies to to go around all this walking and food and bed and everything. Mm -hmm. It's funny when you spend a week in Brazil, your English goes downhill again. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. You start thinking. I can I can hear you thinking about the words instead of just letting them come out, you know? Yeah, the, the problem is that most of the time I most of the times I just uh, I think in Portuguese and I have to translate right. Right, as right. it goes. Right. And I and I live in Florida, which doesn't help at all. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone speaks Portuguese? Dude, in Florida, English, I think, is my third or fourth language. I speak Portuguese. <laughs> I speak a lot of Spanish. I speak, like, eventually I do speak Italian at some places that I go. And Love English it. comes out being, like, the fourth language or so. Love it. Okay. All right, let's move on here, Nate. Keeping it moving here. NC State's uh, Noah Ponte, the, the Swiss boy who got third in the 100 fly at the Olympics. He came over to NC State. He hung out for about a month. He's, he's back home in Switzerland. Uh, huge hole for NC State, who thought they were going to have the number one recruiting class with all these great kids like Aiden Hayes uh, and, of course, Ponte. And um, now he's kind of out of the equation and out of all those relays. Um, does this sink that uh, NC State battleship trying to trying to get to the top spot there? Austin? Hmm? You Thoughts. cut. Uh it's tough, man. I, I read through the Instagram post and uh, 
just seems like it's a lot being over here in a, a really tough time period. As far as it relates to NC State, I mean, they still have arguably the number one guy, maybe number two guy in David Curtis, who, you know, that's the exact kind of guy that you want as the linchpin for a class. So I think they'll still be okay. Mm-hmm. It might cost them maybe a spot or two at NC's, but maybe a spot at most. But I trust that coaching staff and that team to still get it done and have next man up. Yeah. Yeah. Look, the first month for a foreign athlete, always tough. I had a bunch who struggled in that period. You know, what you want to try and do is get them through Christmas and Christmas training is a lot of fun. You kind of get them to, over that hump and, um, you know, if you, if you can get there, great. But it sounds like he just wasn't ready for this because of the, the fact of the whole Olympic success and then, boom, you're in another country all of a sudden and uh, just didn't have time to to uh, process it all you know and uh, it's a it's a big loss for them it's a big loss for him man you know he could have been in a situation where he had something new and fresh and exciting and really grown from it so um but at the same time you know he he he's, he seems happy at home so and he, and he's obviously been successful but uh so yeah I, it i just it's a bummer but it certainly has happened to me a few times yeah, who knows how long he was? He, he hasn't slept in his bed, right? Mm. Is it in Switzerland? Is do they have a um, a government based training facility that he's going back to? Like, is that where his coach is, or is it like a club that he's going back to? We gotta call Nico because I think I got well, no idea. Any okay. any idea on that? Let's see. No, no, no. I don't know. Nico, yeah, Lester, this is the second time we've called you to get on this podcast. Oh yeah, it's a it's a club. Never mind. No, I mean, who knows? Uh, honestly, um, when I was coaching, uh, we saw a lot of freshmen. Uh, obviously, homesickness is, is, a, is a real thing. I get homesick super bad uh, anytime I leave my house. I don't know why. Um, but we, what I used to see a lot was boyfriend or girlfriend is back home. <laughs> you know? Mm, right, right. And uh, it's just yeah. they walk into practice and they're on the phone. Mm-hmm. And they get out of the water. They're on their phone. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't. I saw that every single class we ever recruited, boys yeah. and girls. It, yeah, it's just that age. There, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure this is his. This is uh, what's going on with him. But I'm just saying this is what I saw a lot of. Good point. Um, Hugo Gonzalez, great, great example right there. <laughs> Bingo. When you are 18, the boyfriend slash girlfriend is. It's it's like the apocalypse if it's not going right. Especially yeah, if, it's, yeah. it's, if it's these young people's first relationship. Ugh, the yeah. puppy love, it's over. You know, Bruno. Um, well, that. What's the best way to assimilate Bruno from you know for a foreign athlete? What, what's your recommendation in terms of assimilation? Hey, I just made my wife into one of my coaches, so I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm the best reference. <laughs> but I mean, I mean I, you, you know, coming to America, it it's there's things that you've got to leave behind. There's things you've got to adopt. Yeah, you know? absolutely. I think it comes down to build yourself a support system with people you trust. You know, that's something I was just telling Murillo Sartori, who went to Louisville. He just came to Louisville this year. That it's important for him to surround himself with positive people and people he can trust. That way you start building relationships because the problem comes when you start feeling lonely, you know? And because, especially for us Brazilians, because of the cultural differences, uh, especially for kids that go really deep south or Midwest, Mm -hmm. there are a lot of cultural differences that that can come into play in this aspect. So I think I think it's about surrounding yourself with people you trust and just find ways to feel at home, like doing things you like, uh, trying to find places that serve uh, comfort food for you or, I mean, and stay in touch with uh, with people back home. But most importantly, most importantly, it's you, you just need to have your goal, your goal straight, you know. Yeah. As, as you guys were saying about girlfriends, boyfriends, and, and such, I mean, you came to this country for a reason, and you came into a collegiate program for a reason. So just don't be just don't be all over the phone all the time, you know. I mean, go to practice and make sure you get your ass, make sure you're focused, make sure you're in tune with the rest of the team. 
and um, time time's gonna heal everything else. Yeah, yeah. Get yourself an American girlfriend. Always helps. <laughs> but that that didn't that didn't work so well for some of some of my friends that came here. Right? <laughs> All right. So uh, he's going hey, home. just real, real quick. I, I just came from the airport, so I have a few things I need to taking care of here, like lunch and, and See you, man. So nice talking to you guys. Later, brother. Oh, the best I'll, get I'll get myself an English teacher for next time. <laughs> See you, man. But next time, next time I come to this shitty podcast with such <laughs> much, uh, much, uh, people. Maybe bring a better gonna, camera next time. I feel like I'm watching a Snapchat. The less of a washed up English. <laughs> <laughs> fair point. Fair point. Listen, well, I'm gonna kick your ass tomorrow. It's day one, so get some rest. <laughs> yes, sir, let's go. <laughs> See you, Bruno. Light him up. See you later. Jesus. All right. Too funny. <laughs> All right. Keeping it moving here. Uh, Shane Cassis is, I mean, he's going to Texas. He's just not going to swim at the University of Texas for the University of Texas. He's just going to be swimming at the University of Texas as a professional swimmer. We heard a lot of rumblings when we were in Austin, you know, a couple of days leading up before we went live on the inter squad meeting. Um, we obviously felt like we didn't want to say anything because it hadn't broken. It wasn't our place to say anything. We're going to let him do that. And now he's done that. Um, Brett, what, 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 what were you hearing down there in, uh, in Texas? Yeah. I mean, there was some, there was some school issues, you know, um, that I, I think Austin, maybe, uh, I'd spoken to you about this as well. It's like this, there's, there's so many different issues. It's not just a matter of transferring. You know, mm -hmm. like from school to school, you know, he's in state, he's, um, you know, there, there there's so many rules majors. and regulations. Yep. Majors, all that stuff. There's, so I heard there was some, some schooling issues and, um, in the end, Eddie just said, listen, it's just going to cause too much trouble to transfer for, to, to rivals, you know, Austin, talk to us about the rivalry between these two schools. Sure. Uh, it's one that is. I mean, I can only refer to when I was in school, and I'm sure in the last year or two since A&M's come on the scene, it's it's risen a little bit. Um, but when I was in school, the athlete, just as an athletics department, we were in the Big 12. We hated A&M. Um, but within the swim teams, um, it was always super friendly, except for <laughs> this one time they came to our pool for a dual meet. And they suited up on us without telling us. <laughs> so, so we went into the locker room at the halfway point of the meet, suited up, and then just kick their ass. <laughs> so uh, the, the rivalry comes out here and there. I don't know how them leaving for the SEC has affected uh, the swimming rivalry in the in the time since I've been in school. But I imagine it is a, a – I could see it being a very sore feeling because this new coaching staff at A&M is such, such a great job. He's by far their best recruit. He's the linchpin for their success that they had last year. It's probably tough to lose him to, you know, the team in the state that they're probably having the goal of trying to overtake one day, you know? Right, right. I mean, the I would say if you're talking rivalry, I, I don't know those coaches at all, but I could see the goal that they have for themselves of like, we're taking over this state and they wanted to start with Shane. So it's, it's a tough thing. Yep. 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 And I mean, um, I mean, audience. what do you guys think? What do you What do you see? Well, I think it helps in that in that specific Texas. regard. In that specific regard of like the A and M Texas relationship. Um, I'm not so sure about the rivalry. You know, like Texas has been Texas for so long. I know Texas A and M has gotten so much better. Um, but man, everyone thought the the greatest NCAA swimmer last year is going to go to Texas, the greatest swimming team last year, and make that team even more unstoppable. Now he's not going to be there. It certainly helps Cal, certainly helps anyone else that's vying for this national championship this year, uh, that Shane is just going to be a professional swimmer. Um, uh, I think yeah. what I'm excited to see is him being a different place. I, I think changing coaches and changing environments is not usually a bad thing it's almost always a, the best thing you know it's it's hard when you're the same coach to keep it fresh all the time especially when you've been with someone for so many years so um this guy has real potential like world record potential mm -hmm. uh 
Uh, I think a lot of pressure was put on him leading up uh, to the Olympics. Uh, he didn't make it. Um, and now he's he's got a, a short timeline to fix the things that were not working for himself. Uh, and he's going to do that at, at arguably the best place you could ever try to go. Mm-hmm. Sonny, have you seen this kid swim? I'm not. I've I've watched him race on right. the on online, but or on TV, never in person. But uh, I think it's good for his integrity. I think you know mm-hmm. that's a that's a yeah. it's a shady, not shady, but it's a a bit of a dick thing to do, swapping from clubs to club like that. And yeah. I know you can't you can't fault him for going and wanting to swim under the coaches there, but you can you know at a collegiate level. And I think it's a I think it's a good look for Shane going pro now, and you can't hate him. I hate him for wanting to swim at a different program. As you said, changing a stimulus is never a bad thing. And he didn't he didn't probably do what he wanted to do long course this year. And now he's going to try and do that that this year, make the world championship team, swim mm-hmm. on the international level, and see if he can show what he can do there. So all the best. Listen, I've got to tell you, there was multiple times while I was there, Eddie said specifically, this guy will be a world record holder within 12 months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> multiple times. Like Eddie, he's high, high, high on Eddie's list. Of uh of of kids that have extreme talent and can and can swim, he's him and Eddie have some special connection. And it seems like they're gonna unite it and figure it out, and let's see what happens. Eh, work some magic, Eddie. Yeah, and two parting comments about it. If we're about to move on, because uh, Nate, since you addressed the NCAA aspect of it, I I didn't realize you were asking about how does it impact Texas on the NCAA level that he's not on the team mm-hmm. as a college kid. I can tell you just from knowing Eddie and having no insider knowledge about this specific situation, it's the last thing Eddie's worried about. I think he's just happy that he's coaching the kid and he gets a chance to make him faster. You guys know that from spending time with him, that that's how he's wired. And they also still have the team that should mop the floor this year. I mean, (laughs) they got the, the, I mean, I mean, mop the floor. Yes. I mean, they got the number one recruit. They got the number one recruit in Grimm. They got the Olympian diver coming back in Wendell. Mm. Right. I'm not mistaken on that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they return uh, the other Olympian uh, Kibler and the, the class that they, the class wasn't a huge, huge class that they, that they left. I think, Cats, cats left. That's mm-hmm. tough. They um, did get a, they got another backstroker in. I think he's a transfer from the University of Denver. He just oh, went um, seven one or forty yeah. seven two. Right. Cameron Achinachi, right? That's he um, no, but he's also a nineteen low fifty freestyler. It's not even about the backstroke. Mm. It's fine. They're fine. <laughs> Austin, Austin, show us your t shirt, Austin. Oh yeah. So you know, yeah. don't mess with Texas. There you yeah. go. Don't go wiping the floor with that, but a nice shirt. Listen, and um, and then second thought, sorry, just before we move on, this is the last thought I promise. Um, I've known guys like Shane and, and again, I want to say this in a way that A&M has done amazing things with their men's program over the last couple of years. So I'm not painting them as a specific program in terms of hierarchy, but when you're the very best swimmer by a large margin on a program that is on the rise, not that it would be put on you by the coaches or anyone specific, but there is an inordinate amount of pressure that gets not put on you, but that you feel, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, I've known guys at programs that are maybe like 10th to 15th and they're trying to grow and they're like the blue chip. Mm -hmm. When things are going great, you're the big man on campus. And then if you ever fall like a little short, it feels like you fell a lot short. Mm -hmm. So again, no insider info about that with Cassis, but, that is another read that I could maybe see from afar that he didn't make the Olympic team. Was he partic- Was he close in the hundred? I mean, yeah, he got third in the hundred back. He did get third. Yeah. That's that's tough that to make a change off of yeah. getting third. It's like, did you grow your fingernails a little longer that day? I I don't know. That those are all the possibilities I'm throwing out there. Is you know, obviously it's a great pro group. Lots of expectations. Being the number one guy on a growing program. And then, like you guys said, you know, a new broom sweeps more dirt, just switching coaches to stimulate the next phase of his career. But it is tough to leave when you get third. It's like, man, we wish we could get a shot at getting you the, the Olympic spot next time. Mm-hmm. 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 Austin, did I do any justice with my podcast? You did. You did exactly what I was hoping you would do, which was um, ask the questions and 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 keep the questions short and just let him 
rip. Sure. Right. Yeah. That was so cool. That was so, that was so cool, and I was so happy you guys went to Cisco's. Oh, I yeah. literally had a text message typed up for you that said, "Go to Cisco's. It's where Daryl K. Royal brought Eddie in 1977. Mm. Still hasn't had better Migas since. So good, and that's still the case. So I'm, I'm super glad that you guys went. But the just back to the interview real quick. Um, yeah, I thought I, I'm glad that someone finally got it down of like. Not current events of where Texas is at. Because I've heard good podcasts with Eddie in the past. It was like, let's just get the a football life Eddie Reese down on the vinyl so yeah. that so that everyone knows the deal. I put on my Instagram story to promote it. Like, if you've ever had asked me, and mm-hmm. there are dozens of people that have asked me this question, mm-hmm. and there are thousands that have asked other people this question, what's Eddie's secret? Mm-hmm. He literally laid out everything that he's ever told anybody on that podcast and i would say the broad point is there is no secret it's everything mixed together and you guys did a great job of putting that together yeah and and uh we have four hours pretty much of footage of eddie coaching on the deck i mean nate had the camera in his face asking him questions listening to him talk interact we we got tons of stuff still we need to release nate Nate, yeah, get Ken Burns on the phone to chop that thing up for you and make a documentary <laughs> miniseries, man. Yeah, we do. Yeah. Um, it's kind of funny. I was I was going through some of it yesterday, and Cisco's has been is brought up by like everyone that walks on deck. Like Wyatt walks on deck, and he's like, "Hey, are you guys, you're, you guys are sending them to Cisco's, right?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, it's, glad, we, it's, glad we got there. It's interesting because Torchies is obviously like the pride of Austin when it comes to. Like if you're if you're someone that's visiting Austin, most people would be like, Yeah, let me take you to Torchies, get the trashy trailer. Like it's our, you know, cool brand that started here. But if you know, you know, like inner circle, it's like, yo, but Cisco's was, is actually it where was it's the at. coolest place. We we yeah. walked in and there was no one there. We just sat down and you could just feel it, man. You could feel the nostalgia. Mm-hmm. You could feel mm-hmm. the history. It was it was it was a it was a great place. Highly recommend it. Did you yeah. have the the honey and the butter and the squirt bottles at your table? <laughs> no, we just no. we just had the migas. Oh, uh, the, that's too the, bad. The, 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 the biscuits. biscuits. The biscuits. Yeah. I knew I should have texted you guys. They have honey and butter and squirt bottles there that you can put on a biscuit and then oh, load it up with your I breakfast ingredients. I was looking for that, actually. I was looking for butter. I was like, they got these amazing biscuits and no butter. Like, yeah, oh, nowhere anyway. else on earth you can find butter in a squirt bottle, man. Um, <laughs> we've been getting this a lot, too. We should do more face-to-face interviews. You guys know that we have full-time jobs, don't you? This is, this is, a, this is a hobby for us. We do this for fun. Nate, <laughs> Nate actually runs a business. <laughs> i actually work full-time for fitter and faster running clinics like uh yeah i wish we could get out on the road and do more this is fun for us you know it's so. too fun it's i look forward to wednesdays for this live show every single week i was mad i did we missed it last week you know all right we're gonna keep it moving here because we're way over time which is fun uh <laughs> but uh we got the fina world cup okay the, the isl Fina been go- kind of going at it, pushing each other to to pay these athletes. Fina's World Cup's been going on for a long time now. ISL is taking a little break. Here we go. First stop, Berlin. It's always the best stop. They got the best techno music. It's usually a party in there. Uh, hopefully with COVID that it can pack the stands and make it feel like they have in the past. Um, I guess like Sunny, like what's the word? Like how many people in Naples are, are headed now? to germany i i have there's, there's a big mixed bag and i have a few thoughts on you know on it all as well but for the most part people are trying to work out the balance of doing some training between now and isl november but also trying to make some money and race some more so some people like chad chad's going to go to berlin and race there and then he's going to probably get some training in i've talked to some of the australians i spoke to carl chalmers he, he's he's going to go and smash all the uh, all the world cups before the isl and um, you know, I, I guess you've got to think we need a we need a train. We've not really trained since the Olympics now. So some people know they need it in their mind and maybe physically that they need a train without interruption. And some people are just gonna ride it out, you know, Vlad Morozov style and, and Katinka Hozu style and just just keep racing. And they're gonna probably by the time World Short Course comes around, raced certain events probably like upwards of 15, 20 times. Um there's also an interesting thing like the Australians and, and some people from Hong Kong and stuff. They they have nowhere to go. They can't go home because they have to isolate for two to three weeks in a mm. in like a you know a hotel, an institutional hotel. So this is sort of like a an Present option cell. for them just to 
yeah, they keep going. Fina will pay for their hotels and stuff in, in Berlin and Qatar and, and so forth. So it's like a, a little bit of a get out of jail for, for something to do. But uh, one thing yeah. I will say is a lot of the athletes, oh, not no, not all of them, but some of them have spoke about, you know, God, there's so much on now. And I think, you know, they, they want to be pro athletes. We want them to be pro athletes. And, you know, they got a three-week break after Tokyo and now they can race a lot and make some money. I, 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 I personally think it's a no-brainer to do it all. Um, you can rest later, right? Like you can, you can train and catch your breath back. But now Fina are offering more money than ever. I sell often more money than ever. Make the most of it, right? Right. Yeah. I mean, if you're a swimmer, if you're a, if you can sprint, I mean, why wouldn't you want to make a couple hundred grand now? I mean, you can travel. They'll pay for all the travel, pay for your hotels and food, and make a couple hundred grand. Jeez. That's actually I mean, what's kind of nice about this playoff, this ISL playoff meet, right? Is there's still money like on the line? These guys aren't just you know, showing up, they're showing up because th if they win, they're going to get paid. Mm -hmm. So um, it, that sort of incentivization is is always a good thing. Um, I've always liked the, the World Cups. Uh, I wish they were a little more competitive uh, sometimes, um, but I, I've I always thought it was it was a nice little circuit for people. Um, so yeah, and they they go to some of the best places. Uh, like I said, Berlin is, if you've watched the world cup, Berlin's the best stop every mm -hmm. single year. Mm -hmm. So yep. I wish they were going to Sweden too. Cause that one's usually pretty fun. Um, yep. all right, move it on. Just keep it moving. Um, obviously we had Eddie on the pod on Thursday, tomorrow we're dropping Greg Bennett, who's been in over 500 triathlons. Yeah, I think he was voted one of the top 15 uh, most influential triathletes in the whole entire world. Uh, he's got a podcast that's very popular amongst triathletes that you've been on. Now uh, you're kind of flipping it and, and um, having him on uh, our show. Uh, I haven't listened to it yet. W what the heck do you guys talk about? I'm just picking his brain. I mean, I'm sure there's a bunch of swimmers out there who have either thought about a triathlon, tried a triathlon, or, or want it try a triathlon and, uh, and and there's various levels you know you can you can you can be um completely amateur fun friend type stuff to you know super competitive and then there's short ones long ones marathons so it's like it, it seems to me like a great transition for a swimmer especially that someone want, maybe wants to stay in the sport but can't can't stay in the pool but you know this is a whole but anyway, like this guy is one of the best in the world. So he gives us the ins and outs of triathlon, where it's at, the state of the state of the union. You know what, what's going on in triathlon right now. Um, you know, we just break it down, and uh, it's just a different it's a different feel for me. I've be, obviously been doing a lot of swimmers and coaches, and uh, I think swimmers will look at this and and say, yeah, maybe maybe I want to give that a go. So look, it um, seems like a great career path if you are talented in the pool, but something's just not clicking you may be able to put some shoes on, jump on a bike and get super competitive in triathlon possibly. And, um, you know, could be a new career path, but uh, actually I did, I have listened to a little bit in the be one of the beginning parts. He says like swimmers transition to triathlon really easily on the, mm -hmm. on the bike, bike wise, mm -hmm. switching over the bike and everybody on the bike, no problem. Swimmers are, know how to work hard. They have the system. They, they, he said that they can transition to the bike and become very good at that very quickly running is usually where uh they need to work uh yeah. the most um interestingly enough i'm good friends with matt charbo who swam at george mason you know a, a mm -hmm. d1 mid-major school wasn't the you know a superstar swimmer but became a professional triathlete yeah. for many many years yeah um until he just recently retired at like age 35 which is another thing that greg kind of talks about is like I, I guess he kind of says like in his twenties, that's when you start to get good. And then in your thirties as a triathlete, you can really win. And he yeah. kind of went into his forties and he was still yeah, competing yeah. at a high level. So um, yeah, I think if there's a lot of people that leave this sport of swimming, especially in college, uh, some of these college teams are, are now triathlons and NCAA sport. Um, you know, if, if swimmers can, 
can move over into that sport. I think I think that'd be a great transition. Um, yeah, it's an interesting look at it. Interesting look at triathlon. Boys, you ever done a triathlon? I, I haven't, but uh, literally last week, a girl called or a woman called Lucy Charles Barkley won the Ironman 70.3. She was a swimmer in my region all the way up until maybe 18. And oh. British swimming, if you're like a 400 to 1500 freestyler, Britain like to push you into the open water sort of territory. So they pushed her in that direction. And I, I guess, I, I don't know her well enough, I know the, the, the ins and outs, but I guess she probably thought, if I'm doing this high meterage and volume for open water, let's do the Ironman where there's a lot of money. She's sponsored by Red Bull now. She's yeah. sponsored by these big brands. She's making more money than the, uh, most swimmers ever will. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, she actually, fun fact, from the British Olympic trials for the 1500 freestyle uh, back in April and comes second. She didn't hit the A time or the B time. Mm -hmm. She went like 1640 or something, and it's 1620 for the A time, it's which awesome. is pretty pretty soft. But yeah, she, she got back in the pool and comes second at trials. And yeah, just, just was world champion in Ironwoman, yeah. which is pretty cool. But no, I've never done a triathlon. To the Austin, answer to the original Austin, question, no. no I'm more of an I'm more of an open water guy, um, as opposed to doing the other parts of a triathlon. I actually used to get together with uh, a couple friends when I was in middle school, and we would do it as a relay, right. and we would actually hold our own pretty well against like adults doing the relay because, like, you know, I was a pretty good swimmer, and then my one friend got super into biking, and another one was just a natural runner. Um, yep. No, I have not. It's actually the bike that is the biggest barrier for me. Um, bike, really? I've I never been a big. A I've That's never been a big barrier. biker. I don't want to buy a bike. I didn't learn how to ride a bike till I was like ten. Fun fact about me: honesty Damn. corner for us here. Um, I can finish a run, no problem. Maybe not fast, but I wouldn't have an issue just like being competent at the run and just like grinding it out and making sure that my feet keep moving. Um, but I'm more of an open water guy. Um, but this is a chance to shout out my mom. She actually made world championships the first time she ever did a half Ironman Whoa. for her age group in 2014. Yeah, she did it once, made the worlds, went to worlds, did it there, never did one again. Just <laughs> yeah. cross it off the bucket list. What talk, about, talk about a high shooting percentage. Just <laughs> One for one winner age group at the try that she was at MIG Worlds and then shut it down. You got some talent in your family, man. There's no doubt about that. I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> got a cool um, Well, listen, tomorrow, Greg Bennett, uh, great insights into uh, triathlon. Check it out. Good one. Thoughts on Ledecky? Ooh. Yeah, we, we kind of forgot to put this on the on the list here, but obviously not just a small swimming story, right? The greatest <laughs> female swimmer ever gets up and leaves. Stanford, arguably the greatest university ever, um, to go to Florida to hang out with the big boys. Um, yeah, Brett? yeah. I think just for that fact alone, just going to train with the big boys, the guns, the the Olympic champions down there that they got. Obviously now with uh, with Bobby uh, Fink and um, you know some some obviously other guys down there that can hold their own. But listen, she she's renowned as one of the best trainers, men or women in, in history. I mean, that girl can do some work. So look, I think it's a good move. She just, she just lost some of her pet events at the Olympics to, to a girl that's well coached, well trained. Um, and I think Katie wants to get it back. It seems that way, you know, she's not satisfied. So I, I love that. I love that. And, uh, good for her. I think it's a great move. Couldn't be any more supportive of that one. Very good move. Sonny, yeah, any thoughts super, on this? super super exciting. I, 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 you know, obviously you guys are on the back of speaking to Eddie, but I remember reading the, the the book that was done about him, and it speaks about sometimes it's not a coaching floor, but just someone needs a change of scenery. And you know, Greg Greg seems great. It's it's not anything against him, but mm -hmm. she just needs to change things up and get a breath of fresh air. Mm -hmm. I, 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 yeah, I, I think it's exciting, and what what a better place to do it than both eight both the, the Olympic champs for 800 and 1500 in one location right now. Mm -hmm. yep. One I thing think, that, yeah, oh, go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead. Austin. Okay. Um, I can speak to it because I've seen it work. I think it's only very specific situations where, um, you know, it's, it's, it seems like it's something that's happened sporadically here and there. And it's worked well where there's the female athlete that goes to train and like grind with the men's group. Um, Florida's probably the best situation be previously before Ledecky when Beisel was in that training group. And I know that was a good experience when she would mix it up with, um, 
with Connor Dwyer and with uh, Ryan Lochte. And like, I think Peter Vanderke was in that group uh, leading up to one of those Olympic trials that they did together. So Ledecky is, a, is obviously just as much and maybe even more of a grinder than Beisel was somehow, even though um, I've heard of blue sh- fish uh, sets back in the day and they did some insane stuff. And then Kathleen Hersey actually left the women's team at Texas and trained with us as a pro for, I believe two years, year and a half. And that re- that worked out really well for her too. So it's gotta be a specific situation. It's gotta be the right kind of person, but it definitely is something that can work. Cause just to con- she is training with the men, right? She's training with yeah. Nasty and with yeah. Karen and with Bobby. Yeah. I think that's an awesome setup. I mean, why not go to the guy that like, well, actually, it's, that's a combined program now. Men and women train together now. But go to the guy and think that's just probably the best training partner you can possibly find as a distance swimmer, right? Yeah, and she'll be able to handle the intervals. She'll be able to handle, you know, I know when Kathleen was with us at Texas, I mean, she would go, if she was feeling it one day, she'd go first in the lane for our long course sets where there'd be eight to 10 dudes in a lane and she would kick our butts. So I see Ledecky just crushing at Florida. I think it's a, a great match, theoretically. Yeah, well, it doesn't surprise me that a woman kicked your butt. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no, man, that I used to get my butt kicked by Elizabeth Pelton and Felicia Lee in high school back in and Kate. Oh my God, Katie Hoff would lap me back in the day, dude. No so doubt, no doubt. long history of having a lot of respect for just the really high end, intense uh, uh, female swimmer in in training. Like no they would crush me. Sure. Sure. Are we finish up here, Nate? Um, yeah. What's this UVA thing? Hmm. Wait, what's this UVA thing, Nate? We're we're going to Charlottesville, baby. Nice. Oh. Wahoo! Wah. People uh, want more in person. Why not? Yeah, they're right up the road. UVA, two and a half hour drive here from Virginia Beach for us. Got to go see our boy Todd, Wes Foltz, all mm-hmm. all the all the, the entire crew there. We had so much fun doing the uh, orange and white down in Texas. Just that live show. It was it was fun. It was cool. And uh, they're doing their their little swim meet. Their uh, orange and blue. Orange and blue. They're splitting it up on Saturday, and uh, we figured, why not? You know. So we're gonna hit the road. UVA Saturday live on live. the pool deck. Sunny, how's this, mate? Look at it. Look at us. Hey, Australia's in lockdown. My parents haven't been out of the house in six months. <laughs> And we're on the you road. guys are going to college dual meets, baby. Let's go. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Co- college inner squad meets. <laughs> college I- inner squad, even even better. I actually think inner squad meets are more fun than dual meets, um, just from well, a viewer's perspective, personally. Well, obviously, like we were at your alma mater last week, so <clears throat> a little little uh, too easy for you. But I I thought the coolest part was, look, like most of this stuff is, we don't have a real plan. Like we're not incredibly incredibly prepared people sure uh, we kind of just show up and wing it and uh we put together basically an entire podcast studio at texas mm. and then people like tate jackson were just coming down from the stands literally uh on our level and and just i, I don't even think i was in the live show th- the entire time Not much. Uh, i was just filming and letting uh, the alumni really chatted up, which, man, you got the comments section. They were going back and forth. Maxime did an unbelievable job. Um, and I'm sure that was a nice little treat for you, for you, Texas folks. So hopefully the same thing will happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'll get yeah. some, we'll get some UVA alum there. Yes. Um, yes. If you're a UVA in. alum, come down and join the podcast, jump, put the headphones on and get on the microphone. And that, of course, yeah. Nova's right there. So, um, they've been fed. They fed that program for a long time, so there should be some local people, no problem. Yeah. yeah. To comment on UVA as a former coach that got to pop in for a cup of tea for a year, um, their alumni network is. It might be the best I've ever seen. Like I might even mm. put them. I would put them on par with uh, Texas Swimming's. Those people stay connected. They stay friends, and they. Uh-huh. I, I mean, I hope there are people in the area because theoretically they should be showing up. Yeah, I really, I really like that program, and it's cool that you guys are going to be hanging out with them because they got a great setup there right now. Well, Austin, we went- Austin, you got uh, fifty sec, forty seconds to tell us what you're doing right now. What are you doing in your life? Getting, I'm getting the swimming and diving community on Match Point Connection. So if you're watching and you run a business, you want to sponsor college athletes, go to that uh, URL. link. 
Yeah, go to the URL right on the ticker at the bottom, matchpointconnection.com. Also, download our app in the iOS or the Android store. We're a two-sided marketplace where brands and athletes can connect. We cut we cut the agents out of it. We're kicking them to the curb. Nice. So hit us up, sponsor some college athletes. College athletes, hop on. We've got a lot of swimmers joining already, and it's going to be my job to grow the aquatics community on the app. Cool. Yeah, beautiful. For some reason, I want to stop right on 60. Uh, swimsuit guy, Sonny. Awesome Oops. being here, boys. Yeah, pleasure as always, any, boys. Any last words there, Sonny? Oh, oh cut. you had the 60. Oh, I had the 60, man. I had it lined up. It was just so prime. Did All right. I super got to go, so I'm not waiting for the uh, <laughs> the next zero to come around. 